In the last episode, we unearthed our keel and maneuvered it to the boathouse and onto the cribbing where we will be able to finish shaping it. So we were working on the ballast keel and we got to the point where we need to set these rails up and flatten the top of that. But we realized we were going to create a lot of lead dust doing that and probably would be the highest risk of exposure during this whole process. So we ordered some more safety gear, a full face respirator and some other stuff. So while we wait for that to come in, we're going to move on to the next step of the process and work on thicknessing and flattening the uh, keel timber. So one of the next tasks we have to do is flatten and thickness the keel timber. So right now it's oversized, it's too wide and it's too thick, which is a good thing because it's not cut perfectly straight and the surface isn't perfectly flat and we need it to be to match up to the ballast keel. So we have this setup here to flatten it using a router and a sled. So the first step in that process was I put a line down the middle of the keel and measured from the keel to that line to figure out where all the low spots were. And I just took a marker and wrote them on the keel so I had an idea. And then I looked at the keel and decided how I wanted to, or what exactly we wanted to remove. So on this end, there's a bit of the pith which is on the bottom and I want to shave off as much of that as possible when we thickness it. So I want to cut as little from this face as I can so that I take more from the other side and get rid of the pith. The other end has the opposite problem. It's clear of the pith, but on this top side, when they cut it down, some of the fibers tore. And we want to get rid of most, if not all of that, if we can. So we want to take this cut and kind of like angle it tangentially through the log. So it's only, we only have an inch to take off, three quarters of an inch maybe. So on this cut, we want to take less off this top and more off that end. And then when we flip it, we'll do the reverse and we'll do the final thickness and take more off this and less off that. So once I determined where that needed to be, I went and screwed pieces of plywood across the ends of them and made sure that those were level and were on the line that I wanted to hit for the removal. And then I used a string to go from one end to the other and use that to set up these rails. So the rail, the string is held up with a plywood shim above the rails and I have a piece of plywood that's that same thickness. And the edges are chamfered a little bit so it'll slide under. And I went down and just made sure that it would just fit underneath. So if I slid it in it would barely, barely bump the string. And I went down and you can see the shims that I put in every so often. And then at the widest part of the keel where it actually touches I actually screwed it right to the keel. So these rails are really solid, they're not going to go anywhere, and we can put the router on them with the sled, and then just run the router from one end to the other, and take off what we need. And when we're done, we should have a perfectly flat surface, and we should have taken more off that end than we would this end. And we need to take a deep enough cut to make sure that we get past the lowest point in this keel. So I slid the router down on the sled and used the bit and kind of made sure that we were going to hit. And as we got down to that dip, we were about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little less above it. So I just dropped the router down that little bit. I know that we'll hit that lowest spot and then we'll work our way back up and rip it all off. And once this side's done, I'll have to flop the rails to the other side and repeat the process. And we'll do the same exact thing for the ballast keel. And that'll also give us two flat surfaces that should mate together very well.
So now that I've done the first part, I've got to move the rails. So I won't change the ends where the string goes. I won't change the adjustments on the router. And the only thing I'm going to do is put the string back up and re-level the rails a little farther down. And then everything should match up beautifully and I'll router a good chunk of the way down and I'll have to reset them one more time to do like the last little bit at the end. Um, yeah, we're getting there. It's looking good. Love to get it totally flattened and get a coat of paint on it tonight so that tomorrow maybe we can start working on the other side. like six more feet to go but we lost the sun and my right arm is getting real tired from pushing this router and we're taking off a bigger bite over here so I think it's gonna be probably another half hour 45 minutes of routing and by then it'll be totally dark and I'm starting to get hungry and I've learned in my years that this is about the time where you need to call it quits because keep going I'm gonna a, break something I'm gonna mess something up or I'm gonna hurt myself at least that's usually been the trend so we're gonna clean up what we have here, give it a coat of paint to help keep it from drying overnight, and we'll pick up where we left off tomorrow. And by the end of tomorrow, this will all be routed and have a few coats of paint on it, and we'll either flip it and start on the other side or start working on the belt on the yeah the ballast keel. We will see. The next morning, Steve was right back at it, finishing up the end with the tear out in it. The tear out was somewhat deep, and by that point the router was having to take out more and more wood, which meant it was more and more difficult to make a pass. Curving the area that needed to be removed and then using the adds to take that down will make it much easier to go back over it with the router and level out that area. With this face of the wood keel sealed, we shifted back to the lead keel. As some concerned commenters have already pointed out in the last couple of videos, lead can be very harmful if ingested. As cleaning up the top of the keel and routering it flat was going to create a significant amount of lead dust, we took the necessary safety precautions to contain it as well as wear a full Tyvek suit and full face respirator. I'm sure you'll understand why we have no footage of the routering of the lead keel. The fumes out, but the routing's going really, really well. So here we have the close to finished ballast keel casting. So we flattened the top and that got rid of almost all of the dross and gave us a pretty decent surface to mate against the wood keel. So we got to fill in these pockets a little bit uh, with some molten lead, we'll do that later. And then we'll fare the entire top with some fairing compound to fill in those last little divots and it'll be ready to go against the wood keel. Um, so a little bit earlier I pulled the measurements off the lofting floor, drew in a center line and plotted all the stations and checked that the widths of the lead keel ended up being where they needed to be. There's a little bit of guesswork between the shrinking of the lead and the charring of the mold um, and it seems like we got that guesswork pretty much right. Um, the keel is a quarter inch shorter than it's supposed to be which is no big deal and in terms of its width wise which is the most important we're pretty much spot on. So that was kind of lucky considering it's our first time casting. I didn't think we were going to be quite that accurate. Um, so yeah, we are just waiting on some paint and some epoxy to get delivered in a warmer day. We can finish this up and once we have let the wood keel shaped, we'll be able to put them together.
So when we took the wood mold off, some of the lead had kind of forced itself in between the seams and the lumber, right up around here and kind of in the corners. And we just took a file from um, like old school style that we'd use on lead doing automotive work back in the day and just shaved it off. It was super easy to do. That's a big perk of the lead being soft and easy to work with. And now we have some cleaned up nib ends. So like the top, we'll fill in some of these divots with some uh, fairing compound, give it a coat of paint, and we'll be able to fit in the deadwood right on the end here. And well, we're very happy with it. I <laughs> couldn't have asked for much better considering it was our first time trying to cast something. So now that we have the ballast keel out of the ground, we can start working on getting the ballast keel and the wood keel to fit together. So the first step of that is we flatten the top of the wood keel, and we did that with some rails on the router. Gave it a couple coats of paint to seal it up and help keep it from drying too fast and checking. And then I went to the lofting floor and I pulled all the measurements for the shape of this wood keel. So the half breadth of the rabbit, which determine how wide it is and where the stations land so that we can mark those out down the length of it. So the next step is going to be going, putting a center line down the wood keel, plotting all the points for the stations, drawing in their half breaths, and then we can spring a bat and, and that'll give us the final shape of the wood keel. And we've been waiting to do that until we knew exactly what the ballast keel sh casting ended up being. The casting is at best a bit of a rough process and the chance of it ending up a little too big or a little too narrow, it's there. So if you leave the wood keel to shape to a little bit later, you have the option of playing with the plans a little bit and getting them so that they'll fit the ballast keel and you don't have to take off you know, a ton of lead and do a ton of shaping. So that's the option that we chose to do. And now that we know the exact shape of that casting and we know that it came out really, really close to what we needed it to, uh, we can go for head confidently and finish shaping this timber. The first step will be to mark the center line of the timber and work from there. Three, nine, eight, so. And our center line. With some string and a few carefully marked points that are joined with a straight edge, you then have your center line which you can measure off of for your plotted points. First, we need to know where the stations sit on our keel. Once the stations are measured out, they need to be squared perpendicular to the center line. With that done, the half breath measurements for the top of the keel are carefully marked out. Being super sure. So according to this, we didn't cut it too narrow, or I didn't cut it too narrow last time. So that is a good thing. This is kind of nerve wracking, this whole like pigs in space stage where we're making all these individual pieces that all have to come together precisely off of a lofting. That's the first time we've ever done from hand drawn plans in 1934. So once we start fitting wood to existing wood, I'll feel a lot more confident about all this, but so far so good. The final step would be to spring a batten through all the marked points to produce a fair curve marking the shape of the top of the lead keel. This is done in the same way as when we were spreading the curves for the lofting floor. Alright, let's see look. Maybe 
your final shape. Not fair in the middle. Not fair in the middle at all. <laughs> but the bow on the stern is really good. Side, it looks pretty good. I mean, that's just floating to 16. This is that's substantial. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, well, it's met. So we'll draw this, we'll transfer the ones over that don't match. After carefully marking the curves on the top of the keel, the next step would be to flip it over and finish flattening the other side, mark and start cutting shaping both keels to fit. Unfortunately, winter has stalled that process. We would need to paint the newly exposed wood and eventually lead as well, but due to the cold and unheated workshop, the paint has not set properly, leading to cracking and chipping. This means we'll have to wait for the temperatures to rise a little bit before finishing up the process. We do have some work to keep us busy while we wait for temperatures to rise though. With our wood supply diminishing, now would be the perfect time to harvest another round of timber. Much of that new timber is going to become our ribstock, which doesn't need to cure as it's going to be steam bent into place. So coming up, we'll be getting back into logging with some very welcome help from some friends. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. As you can see, I am not in Western Massachusetts right now. I'm actually in Portland, Maine. I'm on my way up north to go visit my sister who had just had a baby. Uh, but one of the big things about being here is we're actually going to be doing a talk at the Maine Boat Builders Show. So that's going to be uh, from March 23rd to the 25th. Super cool show. Uh, we're going to have a table there and we're going to do a little talk. So if you're in the area, definitely stop by. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and finally, we have a patron of ours. Uh, his girlfriend asked us to wish him a happy birthday. So let's do one up. Let's see how many happy birthday comments we can get down below for Blair Nichols. His birthday is on March 12th, all right? 